Um, so with the use of validation and testing tools, obviously things like that tend to produce more compliant fire implementations. And so today up next is our speaker, Sandy from Aegis, and she will go over different ways to do some fire testing and validation for CMS compliance. Myself. My name is Sandy Vance. I'm with Aegis.net. I'm the Director of Healthcare Interoperability here, and I have been with the organization since 2017 or so. Um, I am the HL7 Fire Connectathon Administrator, so I set up all of the Fire uh, Connectathons. I co chair the ONC Fast Testing and Certification Tiger Team. I'm a co-founder of Fireball, the Fire Business Alliance, uh, along with Christina, and the product director for Touchstone.com, which is our fire uh, testing platform that we've produced at Aegis. Before I worked here at Aegis, I was the lead interoperability initiatives uh, director for HIMSS on a global level. And then before that, I managed IT integrations for Ohio Health. So I always kind of, I tell people, Interop is my jam. This is all I've ever done in my professional career. And um, I truly have a passion for making this stuff work um, and for ensuring good testing and interoperability. So um, Christina, if you can go to the maybe two slides up. Yep. So um, the first thing is sort of what I'm going to cover, try to cover in a half an hour is why you should care about fire testing. Um, I'll talk a little bit about some fire building blocks that are built right into the specification and then how you can be ready for the CMS interoperability rules. Um, and a lot of that comes into play with the Touchstone test platform. So I'm going to talk to you about how you can leverage that system to do that as well. So uh, next slide, I'm sorry. Thank you. So you guys have been digging into this all day and I don't want to belabor the specifics, but this CMS rule promises to enable better patient access to health information, improve interoperability and drive innovation while reducing burden to payers and providers. The impact on payers and providers is great. Um, and so we really want to make sure that everyone understands these policies that will improve access and move the healthcare ecosystem towards greater interoperability. Those of us who have done this for our entire career um, realize what a, an intense lift this is. It's a complex solution to a complex problem. And so um, just seeing these, like this is the impact of payers. And on the next slide is the impact of providers. We'll share these slides, of course, afterwards. But these new policies and the impact um, is great. And the high level here that is shown on these two slides uh, doesn't hold a candle to the work that is to be done in reality. So um, if you go to the next slide, so in short, this is like just if we were going to put it in an elevator pitch, how payers and providers can be ready. Um, you're told just stand up a fire server and make sure that it can receive current data sources, generating feeds for adjudication, labs, and other data domains. And then make sure also that you can ingest feeds into mapping tools to convert to fire standards. And um, oh, by the way, make sure that you're validating all of your performance, including security and um, consumer apps and uh, member portals, and just make sure all this works. Well, you heard Denise St. Clair earlier talk about how important integrity of the applications that will be used to make this all happen are. And so um, what we offer at Aegis, and again, you know, this testing and certification testing in particular is really it is our, it's our jam, it's what we do. And so uh, we have some specific ideas on sort of the, the why, who, what, when, where of testing fire. So on the next slide, we start, I wanna kind of walk you through the five W's as we refer to them of testing fire. Um, why test? So CMS has obviously recently issued new interoperability and patient access final rule 9115F. Um, and this guidance for the 21st Century Cures Act. They're going to require implementation of, and maintenance of a secure standards-based API, and participants are gonna need to provide testing plans and provide attestation to passing the testing from that plan to maintain their certifications. So what this means is you have to be ready with your real world testing plan, um, I believe as of the middle of December. So um, on the next slide, we talk a little bit about, you know, knowing that your system 
is using healthcare safe APIs. So an open source standard, for those of us who have worked with open source standards forever, it means that anyone can use any part of that specification and claim that they're using fire. And I'm putting air quotes around that because conformance testing is completely optional for systems developers and fire. The fire specification leaves gaps for interpretation during an implementation. It's a problem that all standards, health IT standards in particular, share. So the most common way that organizations and system developers would test would be the happy path approach. So they run it through and if I can point to you and you can point to me and that data is coming and going, it's all fine. There's usually very limited negative testing um, for uh, like to, to try to pass bad information and make sure that it doesn't go, for example, um, because of the dependence on peer-to-peer -peer testing. And so a lot of times in, in Connectathon environments, uh, systems will test against other systems, but not make sure that they're testing against the actual validation engine of the specification. And Fire has that built right in. So there's really no reason not to leverage that tool. So the evolution of the Fire standard has resulted in many, many versions, which some of you probably know. And it really speaks to the need for continuous updates to testing requirements and tools. And so this is why Aegis has developed Touchstone as a dynamic tool that can be used for validation of Fire and Fire resources. So on the next slide we see just an example, and this is an older example that I used to use all the time when we very first started talking about Fire testing that very small differences can lead to big issues. This example I'm giving you is the change that was made. It was a breaking change made in a point release, which is the smallest of releases that you can imagine. The fire specification is under constant revision and breaking changes occur quite regularly. They cause two versions to not be compatible. We're an industry we as an industry need to recognize that these changes are good and necessary because we've got to continue to evolve the standard to meet ever-changing needs in the healthcare industry. But we have to prepare to mitigate the inherent risks that come with something like this. Here you see an example of a fire element that changed from DSTU 2.0 to 2.1. Again, it was a point release and it resulted in a breaking change. If a client and a server implementation are trying to request the service date from a system that implemented 2.1, the second system would not recognize the date of service or pass it through to the first. If the service date has been deemed a required element in a fire profile, the entire record would be dropped by the validator, meaning that the patient claim would never make it into the requesting system. So in a healthcare setting, what this means is someone could be looking at a clinical information system and make the assumption based on a very valid uh, request for data that the data doesn't exist when in fact it just didn't make it because of the standard for interoperability. So that's one of the big reasons that we feel that the conformance testing we offer is so very critical. On the next slide, we'll continue with the five W's of fire testing. Uh, who should test? So any software vendor or implementer that wants to have the ONC Health IT certification health IT modules obviously has to do some level of testing. Uh, we hope to soon be offering that through the Touchstone platform and some of the certifying bodies. And also anyone that wants to just maintain the conditions of certification to continue working with CMS. Um, CMS has come out and basically said they, they are not uh, endorsing a single certification program at this time, but wouldn't it be nice to know that the systems that you have working for your organization and your most valuable asset, your healthcare data, are working in conformance to the specification and with the other systems um, that they are operating with. Finally, where to test. There are several tools available. Um, MITRE has Crucible and Inferno. Inferno, of course, operates the um, ONC G10 um, community edition uh, so that they can test fire servers. 
The Aegis Touchstone platform actually tests fire servers, fire clients, and it can also be enabled for peer-to-peer -peer testing. And I'll talk more about that in a few minutes and how multiple systems can be connected to each other and we can do an interrogation by interrupting that message between the two and ensure that it's conformant, not just with the other system's capability statement, but also um, with the other system and point out exactly where the problem is. Next slide, please. So what do we think should be tested? Like ultimately we're all working towards interoperability, but when it comes to the fire specification, there are a number of things. The system conformance to the specification requires validation to individual resources, to fire profiles, and also the implementation guides that have been put out by the various accelerators. Interoperability will require that those implementation guides verify at each layer, the base specification and the profiles as well as the IG. The data that is being validated, such as the must support elements, will ensure data integrity. So it's really critical that each layer of this solution is tested. Next slide, please. So some of you have probably seen this slide before in my FAST presentations. I borrowed it for, for this session. I hope that's okay with FAST because I didn't ask permission. But Basically, what this shows is the different levels that need to be validated. So sort of at the very core of the solutions is the base fire specification. That's those resources, profiles, various operations like get, put, and post, and the fire versions, making sure that a point release hasn't negated the interoperability between two systems. Next, we have the infrastructure use case certification. And we think there's going to be more coming out uh, from the FAST it's the fire at scale task force of ONC um, in very short order, probably around the first of the year. But what we're focusing on with this CMS rule are those functional use cases or implementation guides. So as CMS has put out the rules to require um, the patient access API and provider directory will be the first two that are required. DaVinci, which is a consortium of payers and providers has of course worked alongside them to build fire implementation guides that meet those requirements. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty easy for anyone to pick those implementation guides up and ensure that they are conformant to the specifications that have been built by the very developers uh, that are creating the systems for payer use. And they have been uh, well aware, even though the interoperability rule feels new to those of us on the payer and provider side, these developers have actually been working toward these goals along with the CMS roadmap for a couple of years now. So on the next slide, we have um, sort of the basic fire building blocks. And I won't go into too much detail on these, but I think it's important to understand because I'm gonna talk about the um, significance of the fire capability statements. It's important to understand that Fire has this, as a specification, has this layer built right into it that has been subject to a level of review and vetting that's unlikely to be received by a non-conformant variation. So it's really important that the developers creating these systems are paying attention to those capability statements that point back to these different fire building blocks and validate that they are correct. So on the next slide, I talk about the three different types of capability statements. Um, these provide for a degree of automatic configuration and adaptation. That is any client fire, I'm sorry, fire client or fire server will have a capability statement. And those should be pointed to by their interoperating systems and be able to validate um, what capabilities the other system has and that they're actually doing those things according to the fire specification. Capturing absolutely every variation that could impact the interoperability of two systems, let alone keeping that detailed information up to date as systems evolve through maintenance and upgrades is rarely practical. But these capability statements should be seen as a step that provides a degree of automation and a great deal of human readable content that can minimize the need for direct communication between the operations of the systems being configured to interoperate. So what I'm saying here is that these capability statements that are part of the fire specification are our linchpin to true interoperability as we move forward. 
we need these capability statements to not just exist, but to also be a key factor in any fire implementation to ensure that clients and servers can work together and that they're delivering what is expected of them. This is an automated way to validate the information that a client fire, or excuse me, a client or server is offering. Um, and in a lot of cases, we're finding as a, a testing body that the that systems are, are neglecting to put out solid capability statements. Now, whether or not that's just part of um, the development process, I don't know, but it's it's something that you should be aware of as a payer or provider, um, because it's something that you should be watching for and measuring as a metric for success of your fire implementation. On the next slide, I talk about fire implementation guides. These of course are documents published by a domain or institution or organizations like DaVinci that describe how fire is adapted to support a certain use case. Again, there are fire implementation guides for each of the core requirements of the CMS interoperability rule. These all exist um, thanks to the DaVinci project um, and are ready to be implemented by anyone who chooses to do so. Next slide, please. So when should we test? As um, Aegis always says, and our, our famous Mario Highland, our interop guy says, test early and test often. We recommend that from, develop, from very early development, from the first time that the requirements are put into code, that they should be tested. Conformance to 9115F specifically states that payers implementing APIs can incorporate testing tools into a comprehensive testing plan and continuous integration system that can automatically validate adherence to the implementation guide when changes are made to further mitigate this cost. So what this means is that throughout the evolution of any system development, you can be validating that you're meeting the requirements of the CMS rules as you go. There's no reason to implement something and then backtrack when you find out it doesn't meet uh, certification requirements. So we recommend testing all through development as part of an annual certification process, which we hope will be um, something that becomes available, leveraging this tool soon. And then before and after Connectathon events. So a lot of folks, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about Connectathons because a lot of folks are using impl implementation of thons and connect the thons as a way to implement these things, but that's not the only time you can test. Uh, we're offering this tool um, all the time. It's a cloud-based platform operating 24 seven. It's always available. Um, and so we recommend that you use that in between those connect -a -thon events. Next slide, please. So connectathons are great first, and I again I run these for HL7, so I'm obviously a huge advocate of connectathons. Um, but th while they establish a community of fire users and create awesome in-depth discussion of use cases, yes, even in the virtual format of COVID-19, um, and we are able to vet implementation guides. Really, these are a way to evolve the specification and ensure that the maturity of an implementation guide is what it needs to be before we sort of turn it loose on the, the developer community. But what Connectathons don't do is great, and next slide please, thank you, Christina, is what Connectathons don't do is to grade or certify fire usage in products. You don't get a standardized test measuring the conformance to the fire specification. You don't get automated validation of the fire implementation guide. So we seek to fill this gap of fully readying the healthcare products for safe and secure industry use according to the CMS and ONC rules by leveraging our automated test platform and the validation pieces that are built right into the fire specification. And so if you're working with a third party vendor, we highly suggest that you ensure that they've done their conformance testing. And from Touchstone, they can even send you a permalink that shows their results for any given month or on a continuous basis. Next slide, please. So Touchstone, as I said, is an automated system to validate fire conformance at all of these different layers. And um, we believe that leaving any of these layers out will lead to inconsistent use of the fire standard, rendering API use insecure and unsafe. I like to refer to this as the wild, wild west of API use. For those of us who used to build interfaces with HL7 v2, I was definitely one of those cube dwellers at one time uh, in a large health system. You know, we know that it these are not 
easy, it's, it's not a simple problem or a simple solution. There are many aspects to this and it's important that you have a complex tool that can validate all of these layers. Thank you. So Touchstone is available as a publicly accessible cloud-based testing platform. Uh, we provide internet-based interoperability testing of the FHIR standard, and um, it can be used to test a local host during early development as well. How we're going to enable CMS readiness. So we powered, again, the DaVinci implementation guide testing. There are tests in Touchstone for every single implementation guide that DaVinci has put together. The FHIR test scripts within Touchstone validate system capability statements and automatically generate results showing conformance to capability statements, base FHIR, and implementation guides. And those results can be published via permalink that enables vendors to share the results again, one time with their client or continuously, if that's what they so choose to do. I'm gonna ask you to bump up two slides, Christina, just to mess with you a little bit, but I think I'm gonna run out of time here if I don't. This is the Touchstone landing page. And basically all testing participants need to do to use this platform is go to touchstone.com and register for a free account in the system. Organizations can have one or more registered users on Touchstone based on the organization's usage level. And um, they of course must accept the, the end user license agreement for logging in. But once you do that, you can typically have one system or even run many different endpoints um, against other publicly available test systems. So if you go out to touchstone.com, even before logging in, you see on the left side in the red box, it says test definitions. If you were to go out there and click that, it will drop down and you can actually review the various test scripts that we have for FHIR all in XML format. They are open access. You can review them at any time. And again, we have tests for all of the main DaVinci implementation guides that meet the requirements of the CMS rules. Two slides again, Christina. Thank you. So um, Touchstone needs to be aware of all systems under test, of course, and those systems acting as fire servers are assigned proxy URLs by Touchstone. Um, so we do support peer-to-peer uh, -peer testing due to this setup. We can also support both fire client and fire server testing due to being able to match up waiting tests to incoming messages from defined test systems. Touchstone utilizes the FHIR test script resource for those of you who are aware of it. Again, an element of the specification that was designed in order to facilitate this type of automated test. These uh, tests can be found in either individual test definitions or in suites of tests. In this case, you would go to the CMS suite of tests and it would enable you to check both the patient access API as well as provider directory and many others. Um, these are Usually you can run them independently or together as a test suite. It doesn't really matter. Um, but again, they, they are, uh, we, we intentionally put them into suites so that you know what you're looking for uh, to meet a specific requirement or government regulation. In closing, the interoperability is the responsibility of every one of us who use healthcare data. Healthcare providers are accountable for patient safety, security, information sharing, and enabling patient directed exchange. The industry standards obviously have shifted from point to point to continuous integration using APIs, and it's a fantastic paradigm shift, but it's really important that the FHIR standard um, is used according to the specification to ensure that your EHR implementation is meeting the requirements and ensuring that your product has successfully implemented the standard. Super critical, folks. So I... Um, We'll hang out for a couple of minutes. It looks like we have about four minutes left. I wanted to give folks a chance if there's any questions, um, but otherwise feel free to contact me to learn more about how we can help you be ready for January, 2021 or July, 2021, depending on when they're going to <laughs> lock it down. Andy, a question we had was, could you compare and contrast Crucible versus Inferno? I can to a limited extent. Keep in mind, I'm not the super technical resource, but um, did, is, did they say Crucible and Inferno versus Crucible and Touchstone? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm definitely not a an expert on the MITRE products, um, but my understanding is that Inferno is sort of the next iteration to Crucible. So Crucible was the original testing tool that was used to test um, FHIR by ONC, 
and Inferno is the, the newer version of that test platform. It has a lot more capabilities when it comes to testing implementation guides specifically. Um, they are still hard coded in, so that's one of the advantages to using Touchstone over Inferno, I believe, is that um, Touchstone is a lot more dynamic. You can pull test scripts, you can modify them for your own use and rename them. Uh, you can lock suites of tests down so that you can um, do a certification program and that sort of thing. Awesome. Another question is, could you summarize or provide examples of what kind of testing the CMS mandate is requiring for health plans to implement? Summarize, say, say, say that again. Yeah, no problem. To summarize or provide examples of the type of testing the CMS mandate is requiring for health plans. Sure. So um, at this point, the CMS is saying you should have a test plan. You should have your test plan. I believe it's by the middle of December is what they're asking for. And they do recommend the use of automated test tools, but they've been a bit vague about the specifics of that. And so that's the need that I think we're going to meet in the uh, industry right now uh, by offering this tool up because it is so accessible to anyone who wants to use it. Um, so one option would be to put your test plan together and say, we're gonna to use Touchstone to validate these APIs, leveraging these implementation guides. And you know, here's how we'll make sure that that is um, accurate. So um, yeah, they, they haven't, there's not a specific one way that they have asked for folks to do this testing at this time. We also have a comment of someone admiring your instrument in the background. <laughs> Thank you. I would love to play the bass with you. Anybody up for a rockabilly band? I miss people for sure. <laughs> this COVID has been hard on everybody. Look, next time we'll have you start with a little bit of music and we'll play. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Sandy, for joining us today and reviewing some of the testing and validation ways you could do for fire. Thank you, Christina. Have a great day. <laughs>